Hi, I want to talk to you about making network cables. And it's not hard, honest. I mean, it seems hard, but it's not. So um, we'll start with some cables. I have a few props. So this is your typical network cable. So let's have a close up. As you can see, the uh, plug has eight contacts. You can see there's eight wires in there. And this is a molded plug. This is a typical pre-made patch lead. Now, if we strip it apart, you'll see that this particular cable has certain aspects to it. Firstly, it has this cross piece, another close-up. And it has four twisted pairs of wire. And we've actually stripped a couple of the wires for you, and you'll see that the wires themselves are actually stranded. This is a typical patch lead, and it's intended to be plugged in and unplugged, which is why it's flexible. The fact it has a cross piece means that it's CAT6, which is a higher specification, it can do faster signaling up to 10 gig. And this is because the, the cables are all kept in place properly by that cross piece. So how do you make one of these up? How do you actually make something with this plug on the end? Well, there are different sorts of cables. So this cable is, as I say, CAT6, so it's the higher speed. It's stranded, so it's intended as a patch lead with plugs on the end. And it's an indoor cable. Ordinary coloured sleeving. I say indoor because it's not really designed to go outside under the harsh conditions of ultraviolet light you get from sunshine. But there are different sorts of cables. This is a is also an indoor cable, but this is intended for infrastructure. This is this is the stuff that goes to the walls, gets tacked around the room, um, gets hidden behind ceiling tiles and everything else. And it's intended to go to sockets. It's intended to be used with a punch down tool like this. And you'll see, if we look closely, apart from this strand that is easy to let you pull this flame retardant plastic off, it has solid connectors. And these aren't as flexible. They're not meant to flex. They're not meant to be plugged in and unplugged all the time. They're meant to be used in one place, fixed insulation in the walls. It's still got the one sleeve, but this, as I say, is a flame retardant sleeve because you don't really want your walls catching fire. We then get onto this stuff. Now this is outdoor cable, and you'll notice it's got two sleeves. This is quite common for outdoor cable. The main thing is this outer sleeve needs to be much thicker and much more durable, and it is intended to survive the, the rigours of ultraviolet light in sunshine outdoors. This particular cable also has a cross piece, which means it's CAT6. You'll notice the last one didn't, which is CAT5E. And it's also solid core cable. So it's meant for infrastructure, not a patch lead. I have one last cable. I have to be very careful of this, as you'll see from the close-up. This has two sleeves, a really thick outer sleeve and an inner sleeve. It is outside cable, external cable. And I'm not going to strip it. It's solid conductors and it's got the cross piece, which means that it's cut six. But you'll see that it's got a lot of gunk on it. It's a sort of really thick, like Vaseline. This is gel-filled external cable, and that's water repellent. So this is where you, you expect really wet conditions. But even if the cable's you know, damaged in some way, this, this will repel water. It won't let water come through the cable and along the cable. So this is heavy-grade external, as in outside, network cable CAT6. Um, very thick, and uh, again, not intended for plugs on the end. It's meant to go into these uh, IDC connectors on sockets. And it is horrible to work with. You need gloves. The stuff gets everywhere, really. Honestly, it's horrible. Do not touch this if you can avoid it. So, quick summary. Two grades of cable, Cat5e, Cat6, and the two you'll see. If you see Cat7 and things, that's probably a little bit of bogus marketing. It's probably just Cat6. The main thing you can tell about Cat6 is it's got this cross piece in the middle. And CAT6 can typically do up to about 10 gig these days. How many metres of 10 gig depends on the, the equipments you've got. So that's the grade of cable. You've also got indoor-outdoor cable. So outdoor cable's usually got extra sleeving and it's intended to survive your ultraviolet radiation from the sun. You've also got solid or flex. Or shall I say stranded? The solid cable is intended primarily for infrastructure, 
and normally goes with a punch down tool in the socket. The flex, the stranded cable, is normally intended for patch leads. It's flexible and usually works with plugs. But there are some exceptions and I'll show you today how you can actually use a solid connector with a plug if you've got the right sort of plug. So the next thing to cover is putting plugs on the end of the cable. Now we saw with this pre-moulded cable, this is your, your ideal plug. It's, it's moulded, it's got a little boot on it which means that when you're pulling the cable through lots of other cable it comes out. If you don't have the boot that tag catches and snaps off which is kind of annoying. Um, it's also um, colour coded so it's even coloured plastic to match the actual cable. So it's really neat and there's no way to get it out, it's properly sealed in. Not only is there the cable crimp, uh, the strain relief, although actually I have a feeling with these moulded cables they don't even bother, it looks like it's just filled with moulding. Um, there's also the fact that the eight connectors are clamped into the cable. Now this is flex, these connectors are designed to, to push into the middle of the cable. When you're making cables like this you don't actually strip the cables. And, and the wires go to the end of the plug and stop, it's got a solid end to the plug. Well what we're going to use today is actually a plug that has a hole in the end. So another close up. The clever thing about the cables with the holes in the end is we can push the wires through, check we've got the wiring right, we don't have to worry about the length of the wires in advance, we can make them way longer than we need and then push them through, and then we use a crimp tool to cut them off. So let's put a plug on the end of the cable. And what I'm going to use for this is I'm going to use that reasonably sensible external cable. So again, that is two lots of sleeving, a T-piece because it's Cat6 and solid cores. So it's got this uh, strand on here to pull through. So I'm going to use this much more sensible cable, but I'm going to put a plug on the end. And the plug is not only designed to be pushed through with the wires, but it's also designed to work with solid and stranded connectors. So you have to buy the right plugs for this. If you try and just use the ordinary plugs, the, 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 the blade sort of pokes into the solid connector and doesn't really work. It's meant to sort of push into the strands. Whereas these, um, these cable plugs that are designed for solid and stranded, they don't have just that in the middle. They also have sort of a clip each side that's designed to sort of cup the cable when it crimps in. So it works with solid and flex, which is really useful and saves you having to have two sorts of plug. So let's have a look at that. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to look at some of the bits you need. And the first one is we're going to have a close look at the plug. So this, these are the plugs. Uh, these are particularly, they've got, some, I think these are from RS. They're VDV826 plugs, uh, Klein Tools plugs. So in the close-up of this you can see what it looks like. As you can see, it looks much like an ordinary plug. We also have the invaluable tool, the wire cutters. Now this is a, a, a backhoe wire cutter. These are really good though. They don't make holes in them, they're very nice wire cutters. I've got a crimp tool, but you only need that if you're doing the solid stuff, so we don't need that for the plug. If you're using the solid cable into an IDC connector, like this, then, then that's when you need those. I've got this, this is called a Cyclops wire stripper. Very useful. I have my Klein tools, a hole through the plug, wires through the plug, crimp tool. Very useful. And finally, I have a Flute Networks micro scanner, which is just invaluable. It's not, it's not for certifying Cat5 installations or Cat6 installations, so it doesn't give you the reports on them, but it does check all sorts of things, including cross pairs, connectivity, length of cable, gives you a really good clue that you've correctly plugged the plug onto the cable. And that's the bit you're doing. The cable should meet the spec. This is checking you meet the spec, did you put the plug on right? And that's what it's for, and it's really good. It does have another end so you can do end to end, but you can use it one sided. Put a plug on a cable and check the cable you put a plug on actually works. So that's the tools. Right, so we're going to use this uh, Cyclops stripper. And you can see pushing one way is minimum and the other way is maximum. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it on here. And we're going to do a bit of minimum first. just to get the outer sleeving off. We've still got an inner sleeving. Now, the reason I'm doing this in two stages is the outer sleeving's almost certainly too big to fit in the plug and do the strain relief. So I'm gonna do the inner sleeving a little bit further back. And 
leave a little bit of inner sleeving that we can fit in the plug. Okay. Now there's a couple of bits we don't need. One of them is this little uh, nylon thing here to pull it through, and the other is, of course, the cross piece in the middle, which we don't need. So we're going to put it in the plug. So now we have four pairs of wires all twisted together, and you'll see we have orange, green, blue, and brown. So the first thing we need to do is untwist them. And it's all fairly straightforward. You literally just untwist them around each other like this. All very straightforward. Now you can see that the actual individual wires, which you should be able to make out, have a solid colored wire and an associated white wire which has a thin line of the associated colour. So you've got eight wires. Now you want to make them straight. It's quite important to make them straight. Now with these, these are actually really easy. I can just pull them in the hands like this and they're nice and straight. But some of the cables are actually really quite hard to make straight. And you might need to sort of hold them against the side of your wire cutters or something to make them straight. You want straight cables. Okay. Now you need to put them in order. Well, what's the order? Well. There's a clue. This has a nice picture of the order. And you'll see it says, okay, we'll turn it upside down. You'll see it says T586B and T586A. Now this is for crossover cables. The actual one you want is T568B. Um, A would be the other end of a crossover cable, but crossover cables haven't been needed for like decades. So you wire them all with T568B. And that's the color sequence. So, White and orange, orange, white and green, blue, white and blue, green, white and brown, brown. So that's what we'll do. We'll put them in order. But before we do that, we're going to get a plug ready. And we're going to get our wire cutters ready. Because we're going to need both of them as soon as we've got them in order. So we're going to start with that order. Was white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. And all I've done is put them in order in my thumb like that. Now, if I push them together, I end up with a nice sort of stripey set of wires there. You can just about see. And in fact, if I, if I flex them a little bit, I can make sure they're nicely lined up, straight, good set of wires. And they, they hold, hold their straight set there. And now I can cut them. I don't have to worry about how long this is. It just needs to be long enough. I can cut them really neatly like that. Okay, and still holding them very carefully, I take the plug and I push them into the plug, through the plug. Okay, and you'll see the plug can actually go all the way back. Now, it can't quite get this outer sleeve in, but it can get the inner sleeve into this cable clip here, this strain relief. And before we do anything more, we check these are right. We check the white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. And we can check them before we go any further. Okay, let's get rid of all the excess. Now we've got the cable, we need to put it in the crimp tool. So we take the crimp tool, we put it in the crimp tool. Like that. Some of that. And we make sure it's all pushed in as far as we can go. And we pull the like lever. And all those wires get cut off really neatly. And we take out. And we look at what we've got left. And that is really neat. It's got a strain relief on the sleeving. You can see it's got all eight wires, all in the right order, all nicely crimped. So the next stage is we check we've got it right. We plug it into the cable tester. And the cable tester says 1.2 meters, all eight wires connected. Now, if you've already got a plug on the other end, you can actually go a bit further and plug in the other end. The cable tester has another end. We plug it in. And this will just confirm that we haven't made any stupid errors. So if, for example, we'd wired one end up as A and one as B, the green and orange would be swapped over. They'd still be electrically okay, they'd still be correct pairs, because if you mix up the pairs you get crosstalk and it can detect that, and they'd still be connected, but we wouldn't know until we plug the other end in and do that check there that says, yes, the other end, unit number one, which is this, is connected and all eight wires connected and it's 1.2 metres. A plug that looks like that. Thank you very much.